Let me thank you for joining the ACA Small Business Bootcamp and Resource Collective for this Thursday, July 8th. Now we're excited to have everybody with us. I'm Robert Theobald, Small Business Ombudsman and Vice President of Small Business Services at the Arizona Commerce Authority. And we're glad, as we're glad to have you with us, we like to start and recognize all of our community partners. We cannot do these boot camp sessions without them, without their time, their expertise. Um, they've been great partners and we continue to, to benefit from, from them. Uh, so a big shout out to all our community partners. The Small Business Boot Camp is designed to help small businesses return from the COVID crisis stronger than ever. It is a statewide initiative supported by all our community partners. And not only is it the webinars, but it is a resource collective and a content library. On the website, uh, that you, you went to this website uh, for the Small Business Boot Camp to register for today's session. And on the website, you'll find the upcoming sessions. Um, we have a couple weeks out posted on there. So you can see what that we have coming up as well um, in the middle of that web page you'll find the link to the resource collective and the resource collective is a website set up with tools and guides and resources provided by our community partners to help support businesses um, through the COVID crisis and as they return from the COVID crisis additionally on our boot camp website at the bottom you'll find the archive section and in the archive section we have all of our previous boot camp sessions recorded. There's just a few that aren't, but 99% of them are. We have over 140 recordings that you can go back and access of our expert content providers. And this makes an amazing content library that you can access. There's no cost to access it. And uh, you can go to it anytime you want, watch the recorded webinars, download the materials and gain that information. Additionally, there's a few other websites that are important. We have the state's COVID uh, information and resources page, arizonatogether.org. And then the Arizona Commerce Authority also set up a COVID-19 business resources page at azcommerce.com forward slash COVID-19. And on this page, you'll find business guidance, funding opportunities, and, and other things related to all businesses um, in Arizona. <clears throat> the small business, um, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that. The uh, Arizona Commerce Authority also has a number of programs that help support small business throughout Arizona. Our small business services uh, can help with work with local banking contacts or with the SBA, the SBDC score and others. Our workforce division can help support employers looking to hire or upskill their employees and our Arizona MEP Manufacturing Extension Partnership can help support uh, manufacturers throughout the state with their needs. Also, we have our small business checklist, and this is a great tool for those that are looking to start a new business, start a side gig, or maybe add a new product line um, to their business. The checklist can help identify the commonly requested licensing, registration, and compliance requirements at the local, state, and federal level along with a lot of other great information on business planning and procurement, et cetera. Um, it's very in-depth and we're excited to, to be able to provide that to everybody. So some quick updates. Um, if you've been on the boot camps the last few weeks, you've heard me talk about this quite a bit, but PPP loan forgiveness. We don't want to not talk about this because there's a lot of businesses, there's still about 2 million businesses across the country that have not applied for PPP forgiveness. And this program, you do have to apply. It's not automatic. You have to go through your lender. Um, and I, I've had a number of calls where people didn't know, couldn't remember who their lender was because they applied to many places. Um, so very important that you, um, that you do apply for that. And if you have questions about it, you can reach out to us directly or you can contact the Small Business Development Center um, or the SBA District Office. Um, I've included the SBA district office information on here. Um, all the links for this information on this page will be included in the chat. So you'll have the contact information for the SBA district office. As well, the IRS has the employee retention credit. This is a great program that many of you can take advantage of um, and get some credits back on your taxes. 
And then the EIDL, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Target Advance is open to eligible businesses. We'll put the link in so you can identify if you might be eligible. Also, a uh, new program that we started <clears throat> with a, a targeted application process and, and information is a Small Business Digital Academy. Uh, this is a six week program with, that we developed to help small businesses get online or improve their online presence and build their digital capacity. Um, there's no cost to be part of this um, except for your time. It is a six week program with, with activities and assignments each week, but um, it's a, a brand new program. We haven't fully announced or announced it to this group because you're on here to learn about SEO and we we're talking about SEO and other stuff in the Digital Academy. So if you are interested, we will be having some additional information sessions that you can attend and learn more. And the application is, is open through the end of the weekend. Um, we will post the link for that in the chat um, so you can take a look at this program. We're excited about it. We hope you can join us for it. Also looking at some of the upcoming sessions. <clears throat> we've got a great group of sessions on the, on the docket. Uh, next week, we've got social media as a cocktail party. We're excited to uh, here, this one is from the experts at Concept to Completion. Um, they're a new presenter for us, and we're excited to have them with us. On Thursday of next week, we've got May Making Better Business Decisions with Google Analytics. This is hosted by Google. We've partnered with them to, to host this at our boot camp time and for our boot camp participants. So um, we're excited to have this. It is on a different format. You can still register through our site, and it'll take you to the correct link to register for that session. Then we've got a very special one on July 20th. We've got the Local First is going to join us with their food experts and uh, talk about how to build a profitable menu design. Um, but this is not just for, for restaurants because <clears throat> when you're looking at your menu and building profit into your, your product as a restaurant, all small businesses can look at how they can build additional profit into your products and services. So I encourage everybody to join us for that one. And then on a Wednesday, July 21st, we're doing a special session on PPP forgiveness. And you'll notice it is in Spanish there, maximizando tus opciones del PPP. Um, this will be a Spanish, 100% Spanish uh, special session on PPP forgiveness for those Spanish speaking business owners that we have throughout the state. Um, so please join us for that. Um, so we're excited to have those programs coming up. But with that, we're going to go ahead and start with today's. We're going to turn the time over to Giselle Aguiar. She, this is a second part of a two-part series she's doing this week. Each Tuesday and Thursday session this week is a great standalone piece where you combine them together and you're going to be able to improve your SEO and uh, get found better on the Google searches. So with that, Giselle, I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to you and let you share your screen and uh, get started. Thank you. Let me switch a roo here. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, my SEO class is usually at least an hour and a half. And so since the boot camp classes that the CA is doing is only an hour, so let's, let's make it a two part or then I needed to add another half hour to it. So I, um, I kind of combined two webinars that I do into one and the PDF is, uh, um, has both sessions. So if you missed Tuesday sessions, you still have the, um, the content, the, the, the information of it there. So today I'm gonna focus in, in, in content marketing. Be, um, so content is the foundation of every single part of digital marketing from your website, your blog, promotional posts, ads, videos, eBooks, webinars, podcasts, it's all content. And there's a lot of content out there. How do you stand out among all the noise? Okay, so let's dig in. Well, one thing's for sure, it hasn't changed much is content is still king. Um, so, um, it, it still works. It, it really hasn't changed at all, you know? So, um, but you need to create original fresh content if you want to drive more potential customers to your website, grow your following on social media and get more exposure and increase conversions. That generates, you know, uh, increased sales, 
generate leads, whatever your objective is in, in marketing. So good quality content is, again, the main building block of today's successful digital marketing strategies. And if you don't create content, you might as well close up shop. Okay, so what are some of the types of contents that we have? We have written. So these are blogs, articles, eBooks, white papers, et cetera. We have visual, which could be videos, graphics, slideshows, webinars, um, advertisements, et cetera. And then audio, these are podcasts, talks, interviews, and, and that kind of thing, which is uh, you know, just audio, you know, radio, things like that. This is what it takes, okay? Time, <laughs> it takes time. It takes some planning and it takes some creativity, but don't freak out. Don't worry, I'm gonna tell you about a bevy of free tools and content marketing strategies to help you generate your content, be more productive, and in turn, generate quality leads, okay? And also in the PDF, there's a link to a lot of resources too. First, you've gotta figure out what your target market wants. So um, you, you want to first clearly define your target audience. Um, so you're going to create the content that they're interested in and they're listened to or they'll watch or they'll read. Um, uh, but first you need to clearly define them. Okay. Consider the age, gender, income level, occupation, likes, dislikes, habits, others, demographics. Um, and luckily there is a lot of free online resources to help you get as much information as possible because you have to do your research. Okay. Find out what type of content they like, which social networks do they frequent the most. For instance, if you're trying to reach millennials, they're a hot market. Okay, you need to think mobile, short videos, podcasts, Instagram. Um, then you create personas. Okay, so imagine your perfect customer. Give them a name. Who are they? Get to know them. What are their pain points and their problems? How can you help them? What advice do they need? How can you educate them? Um, and, um, and so let me mention a, a sample persona that I created for, um, for a super, a superfood supplement. Okay. Um, so Mary's 54, she's semi-retired, married to Ron, who's 58, who is also semi-retired. Ron is overweight and she finally convinced him to stop smoking two years ago. They have both been careful and have not contracted COVID-19. However, she is concerned that Rod needs to eat Ron needs to eat healthier, lose weight, and boost his immune system. So if he or she does contact, contract it, they would both survive. Ron is picky as to when it comes to meals. Mary is looking for a superfood supplement to add to his meals to make them healthier, as well as recipes that she can use to disguise the healthy supplement so that he'll eat it. So she's active on Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. It's pretty obvious what type of content will resonate with her. And basically, that's how it works. So you got to create a, a backstory to your perfect customer. And you can have more than one. You know, you can't have more than one. Then you have to think of the customer buying journey. And this is a, a, um, a diagram that I put together that's really simple. Okay, just to, you know, because you can go in, you, you can get um, a template and go into this whole thing and put it in a workflow. And yeah, sure, you can do that. But you, just to think about it. Okay, um, first is going to discover you. Okay, um, you know, awareness, they find you, however they find you, they were searching for something on Google or they saw something on social media and they discover you. Okay, so yes, you're gonna have your direct people that are gonna say, oh, this is exactly what I need and they're gonna buy right away. Okay, so yeah, you'll have those, those are impulse buyers or, or, or somebody's on Pinterest and like, oh, I have to have that purse, you know, and they'll, and, you know, and they'll go buy it. Oh, I love those earrings, I'll need that necklace, you know, so, um, uh, and they'll buy it right away. But then there's the others who are going to explore on their own. So they're going to go to their website. They're going to read articles. They're going to read the about section. They're going to check it. They're going to check you out everywhere. They're going to look at your LinkedIn. If they're, you know, if they're hiring you as a service, as, as an expert, they're going to look at recommendations. They're going to look at reviews. They're going to look at testimonials. Um, they may even Google your name to see if anything bad comes up. Okay. So those, and so, but eventually if, if they like everything, they're going to buy and you may lose some people, you know, in, you know, within that thing, if for whatever reason they decide that's not what they need. Okay. Then you've got the people who will engage with you. That means they have a question, they'll email you, they'll join your email list. They may not be ready to buy right away, 
but um, uh, but these you have a little bit more direct contact with you than the one who is exploring on their own. All right. So this is another way to to put the buyer's journey. This is what's called a conversion funnel. Um, so each stage at first is the awareness stage or discovery. Uh, so they heard about you. They visited your website. Hopefully, subscribed to your newsletter. Uh, taken advantage of your enticing call to action offer or followed you on social media. So make it easy for them to do that by putting social follow buttons on your website and make sure they're linked to your business profiles on the networks. Yesterday, I spoke to a lady, I go to her website. She's got the icons in there, but they're not linked and that's not helping your SEO. That's not helping anything. So, so make sure your social media and, they're, and that they're connected, that, that they're linking to the, your um, bio or, or your, your, uh, your page um, uh, on the networks, whether it be LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, uh, Instagram or whatever. And they don't go just to like Instagram.com without you know, your username on there. <clears throat> um, and not everybody's gonna be ready to buy right away, but they may be interested in learning more about your business and what it offers. You want to create content that draws them in. So send out an email explaining more about your business or even offer them a first time customer discount. This is where your content needs to tell a story about your business. Show the users who you are, what you do and how it could benefit them. Um, when users reach the consideration stage of their journey, they're still carrying out research, still undecided about whether they're going to make a purchase from you. This is a really important um, phase uh, of the buying journey as they're engaging with your content, considering your business, but haven't made that all important step to buy from you. So it could be a trust issue. They aren't fully convinced. You don't want your content to be overly pushy or promotional at this, at this stage. You want to demonstrate yourself as a thought leader or an expert in your industry and provide your potential customers with the content that will help them make an informed decision when it comes to making that all important purchase. Um, demo videos, how to guides are ideal pieces of content at the consideration stage. Um, as they uh, answer any questions and give your audience all the information that they need to make a decision um, to become a customer, customer testimonials. Um, so, and so you're converting the visitor into a lead and then the lead into a sale, usually, um, you know, from your, from your website. Um, and, um, but, you know, with, with all your communications with these people, with your blogs, with your emails, you always have that call to action to buy on there. If they're ready to buy, it's easy for them to do so. Um, and then once you've, um, once you have that new customer, it's crucial to nurture them and keep them loyal to your brand. Keep uh, keeping them engaged is important. Showing them you understand their needs and preferences, and will help develop your relationship with them and keep them coming back for more. Or telling their friends about you and a happy uh, that's what um, a happy customer becomes an advocate. Okay, um, they'll leave a good review on Google or Facebook. They'll tell their friends, and their testimonials become a sales tool for you. The competition, okay? Part of your research is checking out your competition. What are they doing online? Where do they come up in Google search compared to you for major keywords or phrases? Um, uh, you know, and there's some industries that are highly competitive, like health and wellness, insurance, financial, you know, and, um, and I, was, I was talking, um, and you know, one of my new clients really only has one other competitor, but, these people are, are blogging almost every day, like, you know, uh, uh, at least you know, five, time, five times a week, okay? So it's a formidable competitor. So if you're up against one of these guys, you have a lot of work to do in your, in your hands and you've got to figure out a strategy. Look at what they're doing. Look, look to see how often are they blogging. Um, when you do a Google search and you get this, the, you know, the search results page, Look at the bottom two or three, okay? And not the advertisements that are organic content. Um, and go to their websites, see how often are they blogging and posting? Um, how are they active in social media? How many followers do they have? Um, how often are they posting to social media? So if you're lucky and they're only blogging once a month, 
then you can easily knock them off the page by blogging daily for the first couple of weeks, then two to three times a week, you know, for the next two to three weeks. And then if you blog once a week from then on, you should be able to keep yourself on the first page of Google. But the idea is to knock them off the first page of Google and put yourself on there, you know, by putting out content and getting more active on social media. LinkedIn has become a great place for you to post your content and links back to your website. So it really helps with STO and exposure and that all important trust and credibility because that's, that's one of the biggest things. Um, so what type of content? So decide what you're good at, okay? And what type of content you're capable of creating. So blogging. All right, you have to be a fairly decent writer, but there's there's good news. And I talked to the library about it. I looked on their website. The library offers free writing classes. So um, if you didn't do well in English class, you know, back in the day, you can take other classes and to, to help you become a better writer. Um, uh, you know, so so um, I highly recommend you know I highly recommend you do that. Video, okay, it's easy with the cameras on mobile devices and laptops, but what about editing, okay? So there's free editing software on Mac, it's an iMovie, on PC, it's Movie Maker, and even YouTube has an editor also. Um, and you can create um, animated GIFs um, with uh, the can uh, canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. Um, you can easily create um, uh, animated GIFs because the any, any movement uh, anywhere, catches people's eyes. So that's that's the idea. That's why you see so many people doing the, you know, the animations in there. So it really, it, you know, it really makes a difference to, you know, to gain that exposure. And you want you'll want to invest in a tripod, you know, to, to hold the phone. I mean, even with a selfie stick, you're still shaking and you want to avoid that. Podcasting. Okay. For me, podcasting is like the easiest thing to do because I don't have to have my hair done or do about lipstick or what I'm wearing or the lighting or, you know, anything. You just talk. And uh, I love podcasting and it's really easy um, to do. It's, you don't need fancy equipment. I do it with my little ear pods and it comes out, it comes out great. Um, if you can talk, you can podcast. Um, and if you if you go over to my website and search for podcasting, I have an article there of how to get started with podcasting. Um, and then there's starting a start um, um, static, you know, graphics, you know, graphics and pictures. There are advertisements. Um, there, you know, uh, promo pieces, and you can create original, relevant content. And be careful that you don't come across as clickbait. Okay, you don't want to claim something in the promotion. And then when somebody clicks through it, it's not anything what you promoted. You know, you have to be really careful with that because that's a very good way to turn people off. All right, brand image. Now keep in mind that all the content you produce is part of your brand image. So make sure you always put out good quality content. If blogging, proofread it. I mean, I have, I have to do, because I create the script for my podcast and um, that script also becomes a blog article. So, and I've got to, I've got to read it aloud at least twice after I write it to make sure that I don't catch, you know, typos and, you know, I'm missing commas or things like that. You, you know, you, you have to, you have to make sure. And the thing is, is that bad grammar and spelling errors actually hurt your SEO ranking. I remember I was working um, with a client and it was it was a simple typo. He had he had put down, um, uh, you know, instead of slideshow, he put slice show, and slideshow is one word too. So he put slice show, and it's a word, but it's not the right word, you know. So you've got to be really careful with this. Um, and Google is that picky, okay? It, it'll you know, um, so that you know, so it's looking for good quality content, and videos and graphics can never be fuzzy. So don't settle for just, okay, this is not the place to be lazy. This is your brand image out there. Um, passion, keep up your passion. Create content about what you know and what you feel comfortable doing. Storytelling is the best thing to do. Nevertheless, if you feel you're not a good speaker, then videos and podcasting may not work for you because you're going to stop doing it um, because it's hard. And 
And the same thing if you don't feel that you're a good writer, you know, however, there are always ways around this. Like instead of you being in front of the camera, get someone else or do a slideshow with a, with a voiceover. Um, static images and ads, even animated GIFs are easy to create again with the free online graphics tool, canva.com, C-A-N-V-A, V as in Victor.com. Um, they have all sorts of templates. They're free to a point. They have other ones for, you know, upgraded, but, you know, you can create a lot of stuff just on the free version. Um, weigh your options, okay? You might want to outsource your content creation if you have the budget, okay? So research your options to make sure you get someone who will create content that will enhance your company's brand image. Get your social media act together, okay? Social media plays an important part in how you promote and distribute your content. Um, and um, I'm doing the special uh, planning your online marketing workshop for SCORE this next Tuesday, and I'll put the, um, I'll put the link in the chat uh, right afterwards. Um, and in it, I go into detail of all your digital marketing options and what you need to think about and consider, you know, and, and what you need to do if you want to succeed in this. Um, and uh, again, I also have a lot of content on my website on specific networks, strategies, and tactics. The next crucial thing is planning it out without a strategic, um, write out a strategic plan. Um, said, oh, uh, Jay Gladney, one of, our, one of the SCORE mentors recently did a, um, a business plan class for the library. And he says, if it's still in your head, it doesn't exist. Okay, so you want to make you want to make your um, your plan and write it down. You know, put it in a in the computer, even if you just use um, you know legal pads. If you if once you write it down, it actually becomes a plan. But you want to start with smart goals. Okay, on what you want to accomplish with your content marketing. Okay, what are your objectives to drive traffic to your website? Okay, what do you want them to do when they get there? Lead generation, grow your email list with quality leads. Um, grow your social media following. Okay, um, this may be a goal if you're just starting out. You know, So the strategic plan is how are you going to accomplish the goals? Include the data from your research. Okay, based on your research, how often do you need to blog? How often um, will you record a video? Then the tactical plan is detailing how you're going to implement the strategy. Basically your to-do list, okay? What are you gonna do when, okay? And how much time you're gonna spend on each, okay? And it's a marathon, not a sprint, okay? You're in it for the long haul, but be aware that the road is constantly changing. There are curves and hurdles and potholes and sinkholes and, and uh, bunch of stuff. So you, gotta, you, you, you must be consistent and persistent, but also be aware of what's going on, you know, with Google and, and, you know, with the social networks and so forth. But if you stop creating content, Google will forget you. Um, a gal I worked with told me that she was doing everything I told her to do. Um, uh, you know, she, she went to some of my webinars way back when I first started with SCORE. She was blogging once a week. She was active on social media, et cetera. Then she got busy and stopped. And so when the last client's job was done, there was nobody on the potential client pipeline. And if you get busy, you can't stop marketing because you want to make sure that once, once you know, these jobs are done or whatever reason, it's a contract that's gonna end, who's the next one down the line? Okay, you can't take two months off to go do marketing again. You can't, your marketing has to be consistent. So at that point, you hire someone to help you if it's just for a few months. Because if you stop posting on social media, people are going to think you fell off the face of the earth. Yeah. Um, the secret formula, okay? This is our, our recipe for success, right? So it starts with the content. It's the fresh material that Google is looking for. Plus, you want to become a content magnet. How do you do that? You promote it on social media. Um, and uh, engage with your potential customers on the networks. Um, and then that um, draws people to your website. When they get to your website, what do you want them to do? And this is something I'm gonna get into uh, a lot of detail in my class, on, in my workshop on Tuesday. Um, 
uh, capture their name and email addresses, ask them two or three qualifying questions to be able to segment them into your email list. So you put them into like a, a what's called a drip campaign, okay? So if you if you have them download a free ebook, for instance, okay? So then you send a you know a welcome email, uh, blah blah blah. In two days, you uh, you maybe send another uh, follow up email, maybe with a video or maybe with a blog article that might interest them, uh, depending on what what was their answer to their questions that they answered to get the ebook. And that's what's called segmenting your list and you're personalizing the offers that you're sending them to. So that is going to be more successful. Um, and, um, you know, so and also you want to do a regular newsletter Well, you do it monthly, twice a month or weekly, depending on the type of business that you are. Um, and um, you want to keep yourself top of mind on the people and um, you're going to share uh, excerpts of your blog article so you get them back to your website because the more the more people visit your website the more likely they're going to do something all right so now we get to the really important part time saving tools okay you know everybody says i don't have time to do this and they go, but you gotta do it you know if you don't do it if you don't if again if you don't have people coming down the pipeline you're you're not going to have a business you're going to have two or three months without business you can't do that so um, Quora, Quora is a very popular Q&A site. And yes, it does take some time. And I, gotta, I have to admit, I haven't been on for a couple of weeks, got really busy, you know? So, um, you know, so I'll go in there and there's a lot of questions that I'll just pass on because either somebody answered it first or, um, or it's a really stupid question. And I, you know, like it doesn't pertain to me because with social media, I get all types of questions. Um, but you wanna make sure you're, you set up your, um, your profile completely, okay? What's your credibility? You know, what um, what makes you an expert in whatever topic in, or industry you're you're listing yourself in? And um, uh, and the more questions you answer, the more you get known as an expert in your field. So you can also put a link to your core profile on your website and LinkedIn profiles, and follow questions also from your topics or of expertise. Now, this is really cool because these questions also give you topics for your blog, because this is what people are asking. So you might as well answer the question in your blog, because that's what um, Google, Google says that there's more questions being asked, you know, than just searching for keywords. People will, def will write out the whole question in there. Um, share your answers on social media. And, and the, the key, the SEO key for Quora is, so you answer the question with a short paragraph, and then you put links to a pertinent or related blog article uh, on your site for them to dig deeper or for more information. Um, and this helps drive people to your website and it helps with SEO and you're creating legitimate backlinks. Um, uh, now, a lot of times when I, when I pull my Google Analytics and I see where my people are coming from, um, after the search engines, Quora will be the, the top one you know, above Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, where I'm, you know, I'm posting there regularly too. It's, uh, so it, it really works. Um, and um, then we've got Feedly, which is your online newsstand, okay? So you need to subscribe to industry uh, magazines or industry blogs, or um, you, wanna, you wanna see what your competitor is doing. So you wanna, you wanna subscribe to their blog, but not get on their email list. So this is how you do it. You use Feedly. So you subscribe uh, to their RSS feed and every day you check the news and you could create folders to save content for later. Um, this is how I keep up with the news because it's it's constantly changing. So I have I have certain sources that I follow all the time and and um, and then I'll save some or share share, you know, um, go to the go to the article website and share it right there. Um, uh, you know, and then um, if you find some some good sources of content that you like sharing them a lot because they put out good quality content, they become what's called a trusted resource. There's Deliver It, which is automated posting to social media. This is set it and forget it. OK, so, for instance, I have um, a blog called um, uh, Small Business Trends automatically posting to Score's Twitter account because everything they, they write about is about small businesses and it's relevant to Score, you know? So, 
Um, and it said it and forget it. Okay. And so every time they publish an article, it gets, it gets posted to Twitter. Twitter can take a lot of content because just by, by this, but there, there is a point where it's too much. For instance, Entrepreneur Magazine. Okay. So uh, small business trends may publish maybe four, two to four articles a day. Okay. Which that's okay. But you get Entrepreneur Magazine or you get some other ones at 50 articles a day, okay? That's a little too much to automate out there. It really is. So, um, and also it's even, even weed through on Feedly. So what I do with some of those is I'll just, um, I'll just follow them on like Twitter or LinkedIn. And then, you know, and then I'll share depending on what I, what I see going through, the, going through their thing. I just see the headline. And if it's interesting, then I'll, then I'll do it in there. But so it's, it'll, it's just, it's just a little bit faster with some of the people that write a lot and put out a lot of content. Um, and, the, and the whole idea is you want to share other people's relevant stuff, not just your stuff. So that's why you're doing this. And when you share like to LinkedIn, um, uh, your, your picture and your company name is, is next to the post, even when you're, when you're sharing to a group and people start relating you to the industry. So to them, you become an expert in that industry. So that's why LinkedIn is really good for building trust and credibility. Um, and that's what was my next topic, LinkedIn.com. So there's, um, there's a lot of things that you could do on LinkedIn. They've added things ever since COVID and people stopped going to live networking events. Everybody's gone to LinkedIn. So it's grown immensely. Um, people were, were already, you know, um, on it, you know, with their profiles and so forth, but the time that they've been spending on it has increased tremendously. And if I'm not mistaken, I think there's a boot camp LinkedIn class from a few months ago. So you can probably go to the ACA's website and, and dig that one up and, and watch it because it gives you a lot of tips too. And I've got articles on LinkedIn also. Um, but when you share your blog articles on LinkedIn, and there's several places, there's on your personal profile and as, uh, as well as your company profile. Um, and, and then there's the featured um, area on your personal profile where you can, put, um, uh, you can put articles and videos there to highlight your content. And that also helps with SEO. Okay, WordPress. It's a content management system, a blogging platform or web, you know, it's also a website platform. It is the most popular website class platform out there. All right. <clears throat> okay. Um, what's great about WordPress is there are a lot of free plugins and there are a lot of uh, free themes to be able to customize it completely for, uh, you know, for you. Um, it, I highly recommend it over, over Wix. Um, if you're on Wix, get off of it and get on WordPress. So you can, you can self-host, uh, you can, you know, buy um, hosting or, you know, space on, on hosting like um, GoDaddy or, um, or sales, uh, or GoDaddy sales, um, SiteGround. Um, and the one I'm on is called Lightning Base, you know, so, um, and do your research with whatever you want to do, how much space do they offer? Um, uh, so, you know, what, what type of, of website you're going to need and, then um, do it yourself or hire somebody. Again, that depends on what you want it to do, okay? So if you're gonna have a payment gateway, I highly recommend hiring somebody to set it up for you. Um, but if you're, if you just wanna, if you have no budget and believe me, I've been there, you want, may wanna start with the free wordpress.com and it's free to a point, but it's, in, it's inexpensive. Um, but the thing is, is, as you keep adding stuff like your, do your domain name, customization, et cetera, um, they keep charging you extra for that. And at that point, you might as well just go to your own site where you own everything rather than, you know, it's like the difference between being in a mall and, you know, having your own freestanding store somewhere. Um, uh, and um, but the, it's really easy to export your content out of the free WordPress to the self-hosted WordPress. All right. Now, crafting your message. All right. Now, you know who you're trying to reach. You've got your SMART goals. Um, uh, you, uh, you've got, and you've got a strategy. Now, you've got to craft the message. And so and these tips will help you no matter what type of content you're creating. 
first you need an enticing headline. You want to catch your target market's eye, grab their attention. And there's a free uh, tool that I use called CoSchedule, and it's gonna, it's in the um, it's in the PDF that you'll be getting. Um, and it's uh, it's called the Headline Analyzer tool, and it's free to use. But they've got an upgraded version, which gives you more features, um, and it helps you find the right words. Um, you know, I use it every day, just just um, uh, crafting and better names for the score workshops that they're more enticing, you know? So, um, so instead of saying, you know, um, uh, con uh, contracts, and it's like, uh, you know, like, no, understanding contracts to help your business grow or so, you know, something like that, so, you know? So the, the headline says what it is and why you need it. Um, and um, you're also gonna take your list from the Google keyword tool to get ideas for topics. Um, so it's nothing better than to write about what your people are searching for. And that goes the same thing for going to Quora and find out what they're asking. Then you want to keep their attention. That's the first paragraph. It's the, it, it's the first paragraph in a blog or the first 15 seconds of a video or podcast. It needs to keep the attention of the reader, the viewer, or the listener. Outline the benefits. What are they going to learn or enjoy if they consume the whole piece? How are you going to solve their problems? Um, deliver on the headline. Nothing is worse than clickbait. And I mentioned that before. You click on a headline and it's not what you expect. And that hurts you in every way possible. People leave immediately, increasing your bounce rate, which affects your SEO. They'll never trust one of your posts again. They'll stop following you. They'll make a mental note of your name and brand and you've lost them for good, okay? So offer advice, tell a story, answer a question. Talk to your target audience, write for your audience, talk to them. Remember, you're the expert, but they're probably not. Unless you're in the tech industry and you're talking to another techie, okay? But um, provide the knowledge that your audience needs or wants. I mean, I, I had a client last year and he had an MBA and he wrote at that level, but he's trying to reach the average everyday small business owner, which probably doesn't have an MBA, you know, sometimes they may not have four years of college, they, you know, two years of college, they started a business, okay, so, or no college, and they started a business, so you have to make sure that you're, you know, that, um, I, I hate saying the phrase, dumb it down, but you got to talk to your target audience and talk at their level, there's a, there's a free plugin for WordPress, um, uh, called SEO by Yoast, uh, Y-O-A-S-T is like one of the best SEO plugins for WordPress, actually gives you the, a, a, a reading level and it actually helps you, it tells you what you're missing to, 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 make, to, to make it the right, uh, the right reading level for, your, um, for anybody. Then don't sound too salesy, okay, share, don't sell. Um, you've got their attention. What do you want me to, what do you want to do at, at the end? If eventually you do want to sell, but it's, it's a soft sell, you know? So it's, um, you know, you gave them information. Okay. So now what, you know, what do you want to do? Uh, I'm working with a client now who does, um, uh, who, who uh, offers options for cybersecurity. And that is extremely hot topic right now, you know? So, and he's the one that's got the one huge competitor that he's up against. And so I came up with the idea because there's so much news of, you know, this hack and this, you know, ransomware. And, and, and so what my strategy is for them is, 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 you know, quoting the news article and, you know, what happens with that. And then at the end, how your product can fix it or how your service can fix it. Okay. Because it can happen to anybody. And that's and that's going to be my that's going to be my strategy there. Um, uh, and then you've got your call to action at the end. So always put a call to action at the end, at the end of a video, at the end of a blog article. What do you want the person to do? Um, and OK, so now um, page and blog post structure. So this is part of the searchability of a page. It's the structure. So first you have the title tag which should be under 60 characters or it gets cut off. And home is not the name of your business. So don't put the word home there because it's taking up part of those valuable 60 characters. You know, so you wanna, 
um, and I talked about this on Tuesday. So if you're local, put in, you know, the, the, the state or the city or, or um, you know, like Yuma accounting, you know, okay, so someone's looking for an accountant in Yuma, boom, you're going to come up. Um, that is the first thing that the search engine sees. The second thing the search engine sees is the H1 headline, which is the title of the page. So you have the title of your static page or the title of, of, uh, of your blog article. And this is what it is that you do. It's not welcome, okay? You're, you're, welcome doesn't help you at all. So um, this is what it is that you do. What are you about? Um, how you can help somebody. Then you have the H2, H3, H4 subheadings. As the numbers get bigger, the type then gets smaller. So um, you wanna put your major keywords in the headings and subheadings. Um, and cause that makes them stand out for the search engine as they're crawling your, your website. And then you wanna put the question you're answering if you're answering a question in the H2 tag. Okay, this is a simple way of doing, um, um, of, of getting into those snippets, but there's also schema markup and that's a technical thing and there are plugins for WordPress that help you do that. When you're actually, you know, answering the question, you want it to come up in Google in the top. Uh, I'm not going to get into that now, but that's, that's another, another feature of, of, a, of a blog article or, um, or a website if you're answering specific questions. Um, bullet points, okay? Bullets are easier for the human to read, short sentences, okay? So don't write long sentences. Um, text content, okay? Written for the human reader, but keyword centric, okay? So you don't wanna put all your keywords in one sentence and it doesn't make grammatical sense because that's gonna hurt you. Um, so you wanna guide the visitor to convert, match the title of the headline, okay? So you deliver on the headline, then you've got your meta tags, okay? So this is one or two sentences describing the page. And it's, it, what, it's what comes up in the Google search page. So when you're looking at a Google search page, you'll see the, um, the URL, you'll see the title of the page, and then you'll see a little paragraph, okay? This is actually more for the human reader because this has to convince the human reader to click on you. I mean, one thing is coming up on the page of Google, the other one is, them getting a click on it, okay? And um, when you get Google Analytics set up, one of their features is called the Search Console, and it'll actually tell you, what was it Uber Suggest? Remember, there's another tool called Uber Suggest. I use so many of them. Um, um, it'll tell you how many times you come up in search for a certain key phrase, and then how many people clicked on it. So that, that becomes a click-through rate. You know, so um, uh, you want that high. You want people actually click on it and go to your website. Okay, then your graphics. So your graphics should, um, should have descriptions in the alt text box. Because remember, the search engine does not see graphics. Okay, it only, it can, it can tell what it is by the file name of that picture. So if you can before, you know, if you've taken a picture and you, you upload it and you've got image, blah, blah, not a few, bunch of numbers, you can change that to the, what it actually is. And that will help actually help with your SEO. Um, and then the alt text is as you're uploading onto your website, uh, whether it's a page or it's a blog article, you want to put that alt the description in the alt text box. So again, the search engine will know what it is. Then your blog tags. Okay, so these are relevant keywords or phrases. So you've got these blog tags not on pages but on blogs. So so these you can put a dozen of them as if they're relevant to what that article is. And then you've got the categories. So this again is just for the blogs. These are indexed topics. And every single blog, when you set it up, starts with uncategorized. So you want to change that as soon as possible. Get rid of uncategorized and put like your main topic on there. Like mine, um, mine says, did, my default topic is digital marketing, you know, but then I'll go in and I'll choose, okay, this, this article is on Twitter, this article is on Instagram, this article is on, you know, whatever. And that's my category. Okay, because um, also uh, that's how Google helps index it that way too. Now I found this infographic um, about what's important to the consumer. 
And this was really interesting. So um, engagement with audience. This, and so the difference is, is the blue is what marketers think that the consumers are interested in. And then when the consumers are really interested in. Okay, so then we have transparency. Okay, you know, with all the fake stuff that's out there, you want to make sure that it, that that everything is is uh, is transparent. Another thing that was interesting: strong customer service. Okay, that's really important. And a lot of people, if something's wrong with your website and the people can contact you from there, they'll go to Facebook and send you a message there. So you need to be monitoring, moderate, mo monitoring it. <laughs> Then this was interesting, where the, um, the marketers think that setting trends and pub cultural references were important, the consumers didn't. So keep that in mind. You don't always have to be in with the trends, okay? And the proof in the long run is gonna be in the sales. So if you're not seeing ultimate results, it's time to analyze and figure out what's not working. And so happens I did a web, uh, I did a boot camp for the ACA a couple of months ago on this topic in specific, exactly what to look for when it's not working, okay? So there's a lot of factors in here, um, uh, you know, so um, that you have to look at basically, you're getting the reach, but they're not clicking through. Um, they're clicking through to your website, but they're not converting, they're not downloading, they're not, they're not registering, they're not doing anything. Okay, so something there is not connecting with the audience. You got the wrong message, the wrong audience, you know. So, so go check out that, that webinar that I did there. Another big question is when do you pay for SEO? Okay, so what I went through today is basically organic SEO. So you're not paying for it. I mean, you're, you're, if you hire somebody to blog for you, you wanna make sure that, that, um, that they're gonna create original content that they're not you know creating an article and selling that same article to 60 different people okay you have you need to research that and there's there's a there's a way to do it by just copy the uh, ask them to send you a sample and copy the first paragraph and paste it into google and see how many times it comes up if it only comes up once then okay then he created that as original content for one person if it comes up five six seven times you don't want to hire that person um, but if after three months of doing it all organically or non-paid, you're not going and, and you're not seeing an increase in website traffic and or conversion. So it may be time to consider paying an SEO agency that specializes in technical SEO. Okay, so if you do hire someone, make sure they report every month and also check your Google Analytics yourself to verify that they are truthful in their reporting. Okay, so, um, you know, they go into link building, you know, really go into website analysis and, you know, cause then you get the, the real, you can get really, really technical with SEO. Um, and also this may be an option for somebody who is in a highly competitive industry. Okay, so, and you're fighting up against some big guys and not just one big guy, but a lot of big guys. Clearly define your target market. I have a free define your target market workbook on my website. You can just download it and uh, I'll offer free 50 minute phone consultations for anybody and look and, and to see what they're doing. If it's working, if it's not working, do some recommendations. Uh, and Saturday is my free Q&A for uh, social media news. So, oh, we've got a lot of time. So I can look at people's websites. I can do a lot of things. These are the resources. So they will be in, um, in the PDF. And um, so Robert, you wanna, or Lisa, you wanna open it up for Q and A? Yes, thank you, Giselle. Um, for everybody that PDF that Giselle was referring to will be available on our website. Um, with the recording of this session um, a little bit later today, so you can access it there. Um, we have one question, uh, so feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A box. We have a question from Jim. He's referring to the, the um, infographic that you showed with what marketers think and what the consumers uh -huh. think. And he was asking about what, the, the, there was a graph there that talked about transparency. So he asked, what is transparency? That is, um, uh, you know, having an about page on your website, on, um, you know, having your LinkedIn profile 
um, that's complete, that has um, that has um, all your information and who are you, who's behind the company. Um, uh, you know, so because there's just people, I mean, anybody can set up a Facebook business page. And the thing is, is it a real company? You know, it's a trust and credibility thing. So it's like you, you, uh, you want to make sure and Facebook even does that. So if you want to, if you want to actually buy advertising on Facebook, one of the things is going to be the transparency. So you're going to have your Facebook account linked to your personal, your, your, your business page linked to your personal account. So who owns this company? You know, um, you know, who runs this company? Who's behind this company? If it's a nonprofit, who's on the board? You know, uh, you know, where do they get their money? How do they get their money? You know, and, and how, you know, um, uh, you know, so that's, that's it. Cause there's just, just so many fake ones out there and there's spammers and scammers and, and you don't want, and, and believe me, even even with um, when trage tragedies happen, like the like the condo collapse, you know, I mean, there was people setting up GoFundMe accounts to take advantage of it, and they were that money was not going to go anywhere to the survivors of that of that that tragedy. So um, that's what transparency is: is is being completely transparent, honest, you know, everything about who you are and who your business is. You know, that that's what that is. Excellent. Thank you. Um, we got a few more minutes for any que any other questions we have out there, but um, so please ask. But again, this this information is recorded and will be posted on our website later today. Um, with that, I don't see any new questions popping in, so we will give everybody a few minutes back before uh, some of you may have to jump right, on. I, mean, the next um, I just I just put the link in the chat to my webinar, so if you can leave okay. that up a little in a few in a few minutes there and so um uh yeah any you know any other questions i can do a quick demo of something if they if they if they need that but um um you know so david, david had a question about the uh, digital academy david we have a information session tomorrow at noon on the digital academy we can we're going to dive into details about that it is a six-week program there's live um they're not in person, but they're live via Zoom <laughs> sessions, along with some self uh, self uh, done activities and, and things to do. Uh, kind of a hybrid model. And mentoring. There's and mentoring. mentoring. Michelle is one of our mentors that's on there as well. She's <clears throat> she's helps us with that. Um, so, Dave, I encourage you to and any, any of those interested, check out the the link that is in the chat for the digital academy and, and join the information session tomorrow to find out more about it um it, it does require about you know four hours a week time commitment but there's no no monetary cost to participate uh, so with that we'll go ahead and wrap up I want to thank giselle for her great presentation today I want to thanks for having me thank everybody for attending we appreciate your attendance and your desire to hear this information uh, we wish everybody have a great weekend and enjoy your weekend. And we hope to see everybody on Tuesday morning for our social media is a cocktail party presentation. So we'll see you then. Uh, thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.